Hey guys, welcome back to Weld.com. It is now day four in the Weld.com Fabtech cancellation series. Today we're talking to our friends over at Novark. They've got a really cool system that allows you to put a root fill and cap in on a piece of pipe without even having to break the arc. So it'll actually switch modes metal transfer uh, while the pipe is in rotation. So it'll go from a root fill using STT to a fill and pass or fill and cap pass by switching right over to a pulse spray transfer or a regular spray transfer, whatever the case may be. Everything is able to be con controlled by the operator on a teach pendant. Uh, you've seen us demo this before at Fabtech in previous years, so I'm gonna let them tell you more about the system. Hey Jason, uh, thanks to you and the Weld.com team for bringing Novark to the party. Uh, this is our opportunity to showcase our SWR. We're uh, excited to be coming up to the end of what has proven to be our best year ever, and 2021 is looking to be phenomenal. We've partnered with a lot of great companies across North America, and uh, let me show you why. So, when you invest in an SWR, just to give you an overview of what we've got here, you have the choice of power supply. So, uh, Lincoln, Miller, or Fronius. Uh, then when you come and have a look at the machine, you're gonna notice in the market, we've got the smallest footprint that's out there. So we are a four foot by four foot footprint. So that means that whether you've got an existing shop that's quite crowded or you're going into a new one, you're not having to cannibalize shop floor space to get this bad boy in there and producing pipe for you. Now, also what you'll see here, which is unique to us, is the ability to have a wire drum kit with this, ho this hood on it. That is the standard uh, piece of equipment that comes with this. But what our customers have told us is the fact that they often run a secondary wire that they want to be able to do without having to switch out a 500 pound drum. So our team came up with the spool kit and a booster to ensure that you can run those secondary wires without having to go through the hassle and headache and time of switching all of that out. So that's the small footprint. The brains of this bad boy are in here. Uh, we run uh, these machines from just about in the Arctic to down in the south in the Gulf, all the way over to the Middle East. It has the ability to cool itself, so whatever environment you're in, you know that it's set up for that. So now as we pan out, you're gonna see just how compact this is. So transitioning from the red to the yellow, which is our manipulator, it is designed to be running 24 by seven. It comes out of the automotive industry, so it is essentially a bulletproof piece of equipment for you. The other parts that you see are, for the most part, commercially uh, off the shelf. So the reason for that is we want to make sure that if something breaks, you're not having to be down. You're not having to wait for something to be remanufactured. We send it out to you immediately because customer service is one of the foundational pieces that we build our company upon. The other two elements to how we build our company and why customers decide to go with uh, Novark and the, our spool welding robot, two things. One, they want to increase productivity. Uh, we sell across the world, but in North America specifically, we typically see between 65 to 80 diameter inches per shift out of, P, out of uh, the welders that are, are in the field today. The SWR will produce between 200 to 350, depending on the application that you have. So massive improvement in productivity there. The second foundational piece of why people are choosing us is quality. In North America, we see between a three to 5% repair rate. With the SWR, it's less than 1%. So if you're doing about 8,000 welds a year, say it's a 3% uh, error rate on that, that's 240 repairs. At $1,000 a piece, that's $240,000 back on the bottom line by investing in a piece of equipment like this. So very simple, it's productivity, it's quality, and last but certainly not least, it's the customer support that we provide that is world class to ensure that you are always up and you're able to compete in an increasingly competitive market. Thanks for your time. Now we're gonna get down to using the SWR. I'm going to select the recipe or procedure for a six inch schedule 80 pipe. It's as easy as operating any application in your phone or a computer software, it's very, very straightforward. Very intuitive. So we're going to go to the recipe menu and here we have a drop down menu of the recipes available. I'm going to choose the correct recipe or procedure that I want. In this case, it's gonna be a five pass four layer. Set it, out. Here I can review the recipe and you can see every parameter 
that is critical in every pass. So we have automatic motion parameters that are visible here, like the uh, horizontal movements to make it a split cap. They show clearly right here. So that's pretty good. We're going to uh, make it a split cap and it's five passes. All right, now we're going to enable it. We already have a startup sequence that shows you what's going to happen in the beginning of the weld as you strike the arc. Now we go home. This blue bar says it's already enabled and you're ready to run. Now I'll show you guys a few cool features like root save. Root save, if you have a, a wide area of the root that it's gonna be a challenge from say 332 to 532, well, you can enter parameters ahead of time on this little screen and that will be enabled with the press of one button so that you can use root save and that'll save you literally from blowing through on the root. Tack fusion, this allows you to go over a tack and fuse on those toes over the tack also decrease that position, increase speed. That way you deposit less material there over the tack and get good transition volume in and out of the tack. So it's a very cool feature as well. Okay, so now we are ready to run. <clears throat> if I want to change any value before I start, I can do that on the pendant by pressing more wire speed, uh, more weave or less weave, and that'll change my values before I start. But the beauty of this is also I can do it on the fly. With the pendant, I can change any parameters, overwrite my program on the go with the pendant. So I have a nice stand here. I can use the pendant while I'm welding. Very comfortable, very user friendly. All right, so let's hit up some of the frequently asked questions. These are some of the questions that I, that I would have uh, coming from you know construction background or manufacturing background. What would be the lead time on something like this? If I wanted to implement this in my current company, uh, how long am I looking at from time of purchase to where this thing's in my shop, out of the box, and up and running? So most of our customers, uh, when they finally decide they're going to pull the trigger on this, they want it immediately. Uh, but right now, our lead time is between 10 to 14 weeks, roughly. Uh, but in some cases, uh, certain circumstances, we can get this down to between four to six uh, in urgent requirements. So we try to get it out as quick as we can, but we want to make sure the job is done right. So when it gets there, we'll have you guys up and running very quickly. Uh, we should anticipate that once we have it installed, you will be welding pipe within four days of us arriving on site, and then we spend the next four to five days training your team. What about the training requirements? Uh, how long is it gonna take somebody to get a, a skilled welder up to par to be able to operate this system efficiently so we don't have any downtime in the shop? The ramp up period typically is, depending if it's a junior welder, about a month. For experienced guys, you're gonna be up and running within a week. So it's pretty exciting to be able to hit the ground running for us. Uh, we've made it very user friendly so that your team can be welding pipe immediately. All right, and the last question I would have is operator skills. What are we looking for in an operator? Obviously, I would think you would want somebody with welding skills. I mean, you can't just grab any Tom, Dick and Harry off the street. You can't run, run back and grab Todd from marketing. Uh, so what are some of the skills you should have prior to uh, working with this system? Is that a very good question, Jason? So what are we looking for in an operator? The skills the operator need to, needs to have to begin with is minimum, I would say, second year apprentice. Your second year apprentice would have a good general background in theory about welding. But if you're a customer looking for this kind of technology, you're already producing pipe to ASME code with the standards of B311, B313. So then you would be familiar with that kind of procedures. So the junior welders could adapt to our system very well just as long as they have that basic knowledge of a second year apprentice or a welding apprentice that has a good knowledge in MIG. All right guys, if you want more information on this product, go ahead and click the link down, down in the description. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, you can always put those in the comments sections as well. Hopefully you guys are enjoying the series thus far. Stay tuned, we have a lot more episodes coming for you. Man Cub's gonna take over from here. Uh, thanks for watching. Till next time, make every well better than your last.